All right, guys, so this video is going to be about self-defense alternatives to guns. Um, the reason I'm making this video is because gun control is a big debate right now. Um, and I know there's a lot of people who are against guns, so this video is for those people. Um, even if you're not against guns and you have guns, um, you don't want to be that crazy person that brings uh, your pack and heat on your first date or your pack and heat to the movie theater, your pack and heat to the mall. Maybe you just want something a little bit more inconspicuous, a little bit more concealed. Um, something that's just less obvious and something that's just less of a hassle. Other people, you know, maybe you can't afford a gun. Maybe you just don't want to be that guy. Um, so these are your options that I, I personally use um, as alternatives to guns. Um, so we're going to start over here. This is a modified Kubaton. So this is a spiked pronged Kubaton. Essentially what a Kubaton is is a device that's used to target pressure point. So you could use the two prongs to gouge like towards the eyes um, and the pressure point, you know, temples, uh, side of the head. And there's a whole list of different pressure points that you can target on an attacker to learn how to properly use a Kubaton. Um, most Kubatons actually come with a list, a little booklet maybe, um, on how to use the Kubaton and where they are most effective. So this is a modified Kubaton with prongs. This here is a regular Kubaton. These are the more inconspicuous devices. Uh, the regular Kubatons are for girls, you know, mostly to put on their keychains, keep in their purse, um, and to not look very obvious. Now, the, one of the best self-defense items uh, that I have that is an alternative to a gun is the Viper Tech Stun Gun. Um, now, this is a very, uh, this is a very powerful, powerful stun gun. I paid about forty-five dollars for this on Amazon. Um, you can probably get a weaker stun gun for, you know, fifteen, twenty bucks. Um, Hopefully, worst case scenario, all you have to do is press the button um, and the sparks will fly and it'll make the noise and that'll scare the attacker away and you won't actually have to stun your attacker. Um, but if you actually have to stun your attacker, this is the one to get. Um, so if you're on Amazon, you know, use your money, man. You get what you pay for. Um, get the $40 version, not the $15, $20 version of the Viper Tech stun gun. I got this one because it literally had like 5,000 positive reviews. Um, five star, four star reviews of people saying they tested this out on their friends, tested it out on their husbands, um, and it dropped them to their knees. It stunned them. It made them fall down. Um, so that's why I use this because of all the testimonials that it worked. Um, so I'll give you a quick demonstration here. You're not supposed to discharge this for longer than a second. It's very, very loud. So that's what it sounds like. That's what it looks like. Um, honestly, this will probably be enough to scare an attacker away. It's very, very loud. It's very uh, menacing. Uh, and it's, it's also very effective. So I highly, highly recommend this. I have tested it out on one of my friends, dropped them to their knees. This, this absolutely works. So if you, want a, if you want a decent little knife, you don't want to spend a whole lot of money on a knife. This is the knife that I've carried with me um, for probably six years now. A Smith & Wesson uh, Extreme Ops knife. It's the black, black steel uh, blade. Um, I've had this knife, like I said, for six years. Um, I've worked at UPS. I've, d I've done uh, years and years of opening and cutting open boxes. And I've had this knife ever since I worked there. Um, this has probably cut through you know, thousands and thousands of boxes. I still sharpen it. It's still razor sharp. Um, it's still very functional. So this is a knife I recommend for you know, durability um, and just overall well-rounded use. And obviously for self-defense, a knife like this could come in very handy. Of course, you're going to have your obvious uh, pepper spray. Now, there's several different kinds of pepper spray out there on the market. Um, some are not as strong as the police grade, but Saber Red um, advertises to be as strong, if not stronger, um, than the kind of pepper spray that the police use. Um, so you, you might find some cheaper ones out there that are actually less uh, that are less uh, powerful than the ones that the police use. But Saber Red pepper spray is actual uh, equal strength to what the police use. So we went over the Kubaton. This right here, curved knife with a handle with a hole in it. This is called a karambit. Um, there are many different variations of the karambit. Let me get this one out for you. I like to call it the bear claw. This is another, I believe this is another Smith & Wesson. Yep, Smith & Wesson HRT karambit. So obviously, there are many different ways to hold it with the holes. Uh, utilize the utilize the holes for your fingers. Um, different ways to hold the knife. This is very similar to a neck knife, except the difference is a neck knife has a straight pointed blade. This has a curved blade. 
Um, sometimes the blade's not serrated. This blade is serrated. I believe this this particular karambit was marketed more um, for survival use, so that's probably why it's serrated on the edges. Um, there's a lot of karambits out there that are just sharp blades, uh, flat blades with no uh, serration. So if we're talking brass knuckles, most states you cannot have real brass knuckles that cover all your fingers. Uh, you can't have knuckle dusters. Um, so they're, they're illegal in most states. I can't buy them in my state. But what you can buy is a single finger or double finger, uh, similar, similar thing to a brass knuckle. So I got this on Amazon as well. Um, it's solid steel. It's pretty heavy. And I like to put it on my middle finger there. I feel like this will be a very effective tool. Um, you know, again, similar to the karambits, with one finger, you're really looking to target the pressure points. So if you're punching someone, I would aim for like the side of the head, try to hit them in the temple with this bad boy, um, and then you're doing business. So another popular thing, this is really popular amongst girls, um, again, who don't want to look, you know, too crazy with the self-defense stuff. You can put this on a keychain. You can put this in your purse. This is called the Brutus the Bulldog. This is also available in a cat version. There's metal versions, there's plastic versions, um, there's different animal versions, but essentially um, it's an eye gouger. That's pretty much all I would use this for. I have a plastic one. It really wouldn't be that effective for punching somebody, I feel. I feel like it might not be solid enough, uh, solid enough to actually punch someone in the body. Um, but overall, I think this would be useful as an eye gouger. This would definitely, uh, this would definitely hurt someone's eyes if you applied it correctly. So that's my self-defense collection. Um, these are all alternatives to guns. Um, I find them all very useful. Men, women, they can all use them. Uh, fortunately, I've never had to use any of these in a real life situation. Um, I was robbed at gunpoint um, about four years ago and that's what made me start this collection of non, uh, you know, gun alternative uh, self-defense weapons. Um, I was I was pretty paranoid at that point after I got robbed at gunpoint and I was not 21 yet So I could not get my concealed carry or a handgun um, So before I was 21 my option uh, Was to get these uh, get these alternatives here. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video Nick strength and power signing out